Hi. Uh, well, thanks for watching this first uh, Chemistry 141A video. So, I just want to show you briefly uh, some historic background about organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. And so, you want, what is organic chemistry all about? It's about the study of carbon containing molecules and uh, their reactions. So, what happens to a molecule during a reactions? During during reactions, essentially, molecules collide, and bonds are broken and formed constantly. Let me give you an example. We can take, for example, hydroxide, and react it with iodomethane. And when we put these two molecules together, we have electrons flowing from the hydroxide to the uh, carbon atom of the iodomethane. And now guess what forms? See the arrow from the oxygen to the carbon clearly shows that we're forming an oxygen-carbon bond, a new oxygen-carbon bond. So we're forming methanol and iodide. So now, why do reactions like the one above occur? Well, the honest answer is we'll need at least two semesters of organic chemistry to really understand what's happening. Actually, the above reaction we'll learn, it's, it's called a, an SN2 reaction, and we'll learn about that in Chapter 7. So towards uh, a little after Thanksgiving this semester, but yeah, you will need lots of organic chemistry to learn this. But in general, we will, we will learn to focus on the electrons and electron flow. Okay, so now a little bit of, of historic background before we get started with, with a review of general chemistry. So yeah, first of all, what's, what's inorganic and what's organic chemistry? Um, and why do we distinguish between these two disciplines? Very simple. It's, it's a historic thing and people have defined organic chemistry way back couple centuries back as organic compounds uh, are ones which contain carbon atoms, lots of carbon atoms. And the inorganic ones, they don't contain so many carbon atoms. So the other question which I would like to address, and we have already seen some of these examples before, why are organic compounds important? Why do you have to learn about organic chemistry? Just a couple keywords here. So it really organic Compounds make up lots of things which are impo important for everyday life, such as food, cloth, pharmaceuticals, plastics, um, your car seat, your your uh, your medicine, etc. Right. So that's why you have to learn about it. And how was organic chemistry born? I just want to tell you a little anecdote. Essentially, in the in the early nineteenth century, people classified organic compounds as ones which come from living organisms, which are produced by living organisms. So there was a, a vitalism theory which, which said that you know all organic compounds somewhat contain a special vital force. And so this meant that basically organic compounds kind of were living almost. And so you could not take anything dead, which is an inorganic compound, and convert it to an organic compound. Right? So in this sense, inorganic compounds would be ones which were, were basically from coming out of dead matter. Okay? And so kind of the soul would have disappeared from these inorganic compounds, and so, so they would be dead, and they could not be converted into organics. That was this vitalism theory. But now, of course, uh, a chemist, Friedrich Wöhler, he came along in 1829, and completely disproved this vitalism theory. So what he did is he took ammonium cyanide, cyan cyanate, ammonium cyanate, which is an inorganic, a typical inorganic compound. So it's supposed to be dead from dead matter. He took it, he heated it, and he got a typical organic compound, uh, urea. Okay, so that disproved the vitalism theory, and that's why nowadays we are just defining organic compounds as ones which contain lots of carbon atoms. All right, thank you very much for watching. 
and um, we'll continue tomorrow morning with the structural theory of matter.